Hey, welcome to the podcast. This is Bristol Real. I'm Val. I'm Jerome. And this week we talk to Nick Sturge, who's the center director of the Engine Shed and Set Squared. We spoke to him a little bit about himself for a while, how he got into the Engine Shed and what role he plays there, uh, and the, the importance of the Engine Shed in Bristol. Uh, on top of that, we looked at a couple of the companies that they're associated with, for example, Ultra Haptics, which you may have heard us mentioned one or two times in the past. But take a listen. Hope you enjoy. Today we're at the Engine Shed and we're talking to Nick Sturge, who's the Centre Director of the Engine Shed and yep. Set Squared. Yep. Uh, thanks for coming on. Can you tell us a little bit about Engine Shed and its history? Okay, so um, uh, we'll start with Set Squared because that's kind of the, the history. Uh, Set Squared uh, established in about 2002. It's a partnership between Bristol, Bath, Southampton and Surrey Universities. Uh, government funded to uh, use the universities as a platform to support or rather accelerate early stage high tech, high growth businesses. So that's been running now for 13 years or so. I've been running the Bristol Centre for uh, eight years um, and we've grown it. When I came on board, we were 26 companies that we were supporting. We're now 67. Um, uh, and what we found was that whilst being on the university precinct was a great place uh, to be in terms of interaction with academics, also Park Row, um, uh, Clifton, great place for bars and cafes and, and shops and so on. Um, but we didn't have the right kind of space we didn't have a high profile space for the city so what we did um, in 2013 was to move out of the university precinct and create this thing called engine shed so engine shed is now the home to set squared but also home to some other things as well and i'll, I'll come to that um, so engine shed is a collaboration between the city council and the university of bristol with a mission to accelerate uh, economic growth in the long term. So we have a 15-year lease on this building. The building itself has an iconic history built by Brunel in 1839 to 41, uh, the world's oldest surviving purpose-built station right on Temple Meads, uh, and with that, as I say, that legacy of innovation. So we now host here uh, the Set Square Centre. Uh, we've got a privately run accelerator called Webstart that support uh, or invest in and accelerate internet only businesses uh, we have the local enterprise partnership here whose mission is to also um, grow the economy but also from a transport and a um, infrastructure point of view as well as economic uh, act, uh, business activity and the inward investment service uh, and we have a business lounge membership only business lounge and uh, meeting rooms for hire so it's a multi-faceted uh, hub and uh, in terms of becoming a part of it do you, do you guys go around trying to recruit companies or do they come to you so at, th at the moment, um, so we're only in phase one of Engine Shed uh, in that we're constrained in space. So we've already got plans for Engine Shed 2, which will triple the size of the amount of space we've got over the next two years. Um, but with what, what we've got at the moment, uh, Engine Shed itself doesn't take in new businesses as tenants. Um, Set Squared, which is the incubator for high-tech, high-growth businesses, does take in companies within its space. So um, uh, Set Squared does go and recruit companies, or rather they come to us, um, uh, and we uh, assess companies on our criteria, is it, which are, is it high-tech, is it high-growth, can we add value? And if it satisfies those criteria, we'll take them in and support them. <coughs> uh, Phase two of Engine Shed will we'll have more space and we will be looking for companies to come in and be part of that. We'll also hopefully be taking in other incubators um, uh, as well. Um, but there are other ways to get engaged. So I, I mentioned that we have a business lounge uh, and that's the space we're in at the moment. Uh, and that is open to memberships from organisations. So we have the four universities, Bristol, UE, Bath Spa and Bath universities, all members, all academic staff um, from those universities can use the space here. Uh, the Institute of Directors, Bristol Media, the Royal Society of Arts uh, and uh, a couple of other org network organisations can use the space and we're starting to sell memberships to businesses. So Just Eat 
have a membership, for example, you may have heard of Just Eat. Um, they've set up in Bristol from London recently. Um, and other companies can take a, a business lounge membership and be part of the space and use the space. But it's not just about using a desk or using it for meetings. It's actually about interacting with, with, with people. And then the other, th the other aspect is, and this is quite important to us, is hosting events. Um, we have meeting rooms for hire and including this seminar space. Um, but if it's a project uh, or activity that we want to support because it has a benefit to the ecosystem, then we'll um, host it and it won't cost as much. So do you see much of that interaction then? Oh, lots, yeah. So, so we've been open for uh, 15 months now and uh, the level of interaction between the organisations within the building but also people using the lounge has, has been significant. And there are lots of examples of uh, where in chance interactions have occurred that have, le have then led to um, new business. So, for example, Oracle, um, big you know, US tech company have actually been in Bristol, had an office in Bristol for the last 30 years. Nobody really knew that. Um, we happened to engage with the guy who is there, who's now the lead manager there, and through a chance introduction here, he's now talked to the Inward Investment Service and they're working with him on growing the Oracle presence in Bristol. And uh, th this new engine shed you mentioned, is that going to be in Bristol as well? Oh, it's next door, yeah. Oh, so yeah. still just an extension of the building? If I could build on top of this building, I would, but it's grade one listed, yeah. so yeah. that puts some constraints on it. But um, we're looking at the closest possible site right. to, so to here. So Yeah, I mean, so we're looking, f we're talking about 50 feet from yeah. here. Yeah. Are you seeing any other growth in the area? Because I know the city's putting a lot of money into the uh, do you know anything? Yeah, so, so there's lots going on. Um, uh, I think this is... Br Bristol has always been a strong economy um, uh, because it's been a diverse... In it had a load of diverse industries. We've got, you know, aerospace has been strong, high-tech, um, especially semiconductor, creative industries, animation, uh, financial services, hot air ballooning... Um, the food business has always been quite quite strong, so you've got if, if, you know the, the the kind of the the economy is hedged if you like in in there's so we've we, we, in terms of its robustness. So we've never never really been um, vulnerable to to recession. However, um, uh, we now seem to be in boom time at the moment. Engine shed is is crammed full. All the flexible office space around here for early stage companies. Is, is full to the brim. Um, we're gonna. We can't wait until Engine Shed Two comes along. So we're putting containers and converting them in the car park to create temporary office space. Um, you've got the arena happening um, just across the other side of the station. Um, so that's two years away. Uh, we've got Network Rail going to be bringing the electric trains to the other side of this building. Um, uh, we've been some recent research has put Bristol and Bath as a cluster is the biggest digital cluster outside London. Uh, th there is so much activity here, and the rest of the UK are now looking at Bristol to see how, how things are done properly. Does this... Sorry, does the engine shed have any involvement with the autonomous car stuff that's happening in Bristol? Uh, not directly at the moment, <coughs> um, but indirectly via two, two means. One is... One of the set squared companies that's resident here, uh, Fusion Processing, um, whose first product is a product called Cycle Eye, which bolts on the side of a bus and uses radar and machine vision to um, intelligently spot whether there's a bicycle coming up the inside of a bus or a truck uh, and can give um, uh, alerts to drivers. They're involved in the driverless car project using some of their technology for obvious reasons. And the second is that we are a node on the Bristol is Open project, which is this experimental um, 30 gigabit network around the city, but with sensors and uh, enhanced Wi-Fi and um, an open programmable um, uh, um, system 
operating on that so that you can you can experiment on the city with open data and sensors really? around the city yeah so that's that's involving the um, high performance networks group in the University of Bristol and the city council and that will provide a whole load of opportunities one of which of course is inter- interfacing with driverless cars yeah. um, uh, uh, or helping in the, the test bed so effectively Bristol's open creates a test bed mm-hmm. on which things like driverless cars can be better tested. So is that data that you mentioned on the open, you said it was open programmable, uh, is that open to everyone or do you have to have a license? So, so the deal will be, council? so the deal will be that um, uh, the council and the university together are developing this test bed yeah. and it will sell licenses to companies mm-hmm. or organisations to use that network. Yeah. Um, for big corporates, rightly they'll be charged lots of money for that Mm -hmm. for um, SMEs small businesses it'll be a much more accessible fee because we want to stimulate innovation Mm -hmm. and it's not just about creating new businesses that's also about creating exciting applications or tools to engage with schools or deliver council services in a, in a, in a more exciting, more accessible and, and more cost-effective way. Mm-hmm. So this is hugely exciting um, uh, and I think game-changing. Um, uh, and, and Engine Shared is a node on that network, so there'll be ways of connect. Companies here will get access to that network and others can come in and use the, the facility. Mm-hmm. And in terms of uh, the, co- the companies you have here, are they mainly... Kind of recent startups, or the past few years, or they kind of. So, so it's a mixture. Um, so, uh, the, the, the typical company, typical kind of life cycle of a company within Set Squared is is brand new startup. Um, uh, probably someone who's been in the industry for a while. Um, and having a go at starting their own business, we work with them uh, for a couple of years, get them on their way, and they and they move on. But some companies stay with us for longer for for whatever reason. Um, and then a company we've just interviewed, my last meeting, they've been running for ten years, software development business, um, running do, developing bespoke software. Um, uh, so in itself, not a scalable business that Set Squared would need to see, uh, but. Um, they want to, having traded for 10 years successfully, they want to really scale up now. So we're going to take them in um, to help them develop that next phase and develop a strategy to take them to a, a multi-million pound business rather than a one million pound business. And how does, how does it work? Do you have kind of uh, a team here at Engine Shed who act as mentors to the company? So, so we do a number of things. So first of all, we have um, some salaried staff who provide coaching. Uh, that's one-to-one strategic support. Then we have some volunteer mentors um, uh, who aren't necessarily based here but come in and meet companies. Then we run workshops. We run strategic business review panels. Uh, we have a lawyer who comes in once a week, an accountant, a patent attorney, um, a mergers and acquisitions advisor, an export advisor, a journalist in residence. So lots of professional services available for companies to tap into. Um, uh, then we run investor readiness training. We run investor showcase events. Uh, and we let companies access our network of, of contacts. And um, kind of the people who... Do you have, Kind of, uh, have you ever turned down companies? Oh, we reject it? about 60, 60% plus, right. 60 plus yeah. percent of companies, yeah. So you go through kind of the interview process yeah. and business plan? And well, so, so our view is we, we, we have quite... You should ask the guy who's just had an hour with us um, interviewing him. Um, we gave him a tough time because we want to see really whether they've got the metal to be able to run their business we're not going to run their business for them they have to want have the drive and the, the robustness of character to, to drive their own business through the, the rough and the smooth so what we do in our interview we don't go too much into the business plan they may not have a business plan we want to understand how they've got to where they are which tells us about their skills it tells us about what's motivating them you know what stage their business is at is it brand new have they got the technology proven or whatever it might be and really where they want to go what's their aspiration Um, and that tells us all we need to know about whether we can add value to that business what do you find is the most kind of lacking quality is there something that Uh, so some of the things that turn up a lot are 
um, uh, not willing to listen. Uh, we get people who uh, really don't understand their market, and so if they haven't, or, or and part of that is not having bothered to try and work out what their market is, and and for us that indicates that they haven't they've got they haven't got quite enough of self-starting. Um, so those are probably the common things. And uh, it's a bit of a change of subject, but. How did you get into it? You studied at Swansea. So I, I did a, a, a electronics computing at Swansea um, a long time ago. Uh, I worked, I thought I wanted to do medical physics to start with, electronics in the hospital, um, uh, but it wasn't hugely exciting. Um, uh, so then I worked for a medical device startup um, out of, after working in the hospital doing my degree, uh, and that wasn't going anywhere. So I b- joined a big um, multinational chip company with a base in Bristol, uh, which interestingly had a very entrepreneurial kind of culture, and we ended up starting, a group of us starting a business out of there. So I co-founded a technology startup um, making video phones, uh, and we grew that, listed that on the stock exchange, grew that to 125 people in the UK and the US, uh, and then sold that, uh, and so I've kind of got that experience, um, and uh discovered stumbled across set squared and thought well that's quite interesting that you know i'll do that for a bit see what happens and um now i'm running it was the whole um startup kind of thing did you stumble across that was that something you always had in the back of your mind no stumbled across it so the, in fact the group of us were made redundant um so it was a desperation how do we make a you know what are we going to do uh one of the guys had an idea to start our own business and we thought well we're not going to get a better chance so let's do it so purely being in the right place at the right time. And to clarify, that was the business that was valued at £250 million on exit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not, not on exit, so oh, um, at, one uh, point, at one point. But the okay. vagary of being listed on the stock market, this was dot-com boom time, mm-hmm. uh, um, probably before your time, um, when kind of market valuations were just going through the roof. So there was a point where we were worth about, two, the business was worth about £270 million. We couldn't sell at that mm-hmm. point because it wasn't liquid. Um, uh, so um, uh, we didn't. The founders didn't make anywhere near that much money out of it. We made some, but not that much. <laughs> what side you hit? Which is good. Do you enjoy working here? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So you see a lot of innovation. Do you have any particular favourite <coughs> projects? Like do you prefer social enterprise or so, arts? Or so so um, within Set Squared, they're all high tech, high growth. Yeah. Um, in theory, there could be social enterprises, but but. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've only had one in the 180 we've supported. Um, they, they're typically engineering-based rather than arts or, or more creative. Um, what I really enjoy, I've always enjoyed the set squared bit, which is working with companies as they grow. But the engine shed perspective is about developing more collaboration between people and organisations much broader than the set squared piece. So um, being part of the growth of the local economy. Yeah. If you like, that's what I find really exciting. And you worked with Ultra Haptics, or yep. do you still work with them? So Ultra Haptics yeah. are based here, yep, mm-hmm. so we're still supporting them. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's a great story. So they they've um, they came into us as kind of two and a half people. They've, in the last month, moved into an office for 14. Yeah. Um, uh, and They're working with Canary 4 as well, yep, aren't they? Yeah, they are, yep. Yeah, but let's, uh, sorry, shall we just clarify what Ultra Haptics is so people can look it up? Yep. It's sure. that great promotional video that they have. <laughs> yeah. uh, effectively, it's touch in midair is the best way of describing it. They use ultrasonic. Yeah, I mean, if, um, if you've come across a leap motion before, it's sort of like that, except you can actually feel what's yeah. going on. It's, it, it's very difficult yeah. to describe without yeah. actually playing with it. it yeah. it's, it's really exciting and very... Um, popular with people trying to see exciting new technologies and it's a University of Bristol spin out mm-hmm. um, so it's come from the academic activity university and and that's unusual for Set Squared most companies haven't come from the university yeah. so despite being a university run project um, uh, it's uh, 95% of the companies we work with haven't come from the university mm-hmm. Can you give us a briefing on one of the more innovative ones you've seen recently? So, not, or not necessarily more innovative, but ones which are eye-catching and have that public appeal where people see them and go, "Wow." 
Okay, so I, I mean, they're, they're all different. A lot, a lot of the businesses we deal with are what we call B two B, business to business. Mm-hmm. So names you probably won't have heard of. Yeah. So. Um, uh, you know, one I've already mentioned, Fusion Processing, which is this cycle eye product. I mean, that's that's great because whilst it sounds a simple thing, actually, if you get too many false alarms, the driver will just switch it off and ignore it. So you've lo- you've lost the benefit. So it does actually have to be very very smart. So th- and that's doing trials. And uh, in fact, they've got an order from Britain First Bus to to you know operate in Bristol. Um, uh, so that's one completely different one is a company called um, Camera Forensics which uses embedded data within photographs, digital photographs on the internet to track stolen cameras or of course uh, trace inappropriate photographic content that might be on the internet mm-hmm. to actually track back to whose camera it oh, is. Oh, that's the GPS location no, data? No, way, it's, this no? is using serial number data. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, again, it's not rocket science. Mm-hmm. It's about the application of something that, 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 that's existing. Um, uh, we've got um, uh, what our biggest company here at the moment um, in the building is a company called Blue Wireless, which have got have developed a chip to do 60 gigahertz wireless data transmission. Um, so that's next generation Wi-Fi, uh, <clears throat> and they're part of the Bristol is Open project. So they'll be delivering that high um, bandwidth Wi-Fi around Bristol uh, soon. So that's quite exciting. Mm-hmm. So you've got completely different range of applications. And how long do the companies stay for? Do they? Have it varies. Yeah. So some will be six months, and and we realise there's nothing there, so we'll tell them to stop. Um, other companies have been with us for five, six years. And are, are you personally involved with some of them, or do you have kind of a play in all of them? It depends what you mean by having a play. So do Set Square doesn't. So the Set Square doesn't invest okay. in in any of the companies. Um, do you, as uh, as distinct from Set Square, do you invest in the companies? I do personally invest in some companies. Yeah. Uh, but it, but it, it's it's um, all registered because, um, and it's only with companies that we're not um, actively working with yeah. um, at uh, any one point in time, because we have to make sure a critical part of what Set Square does is to um, uh, have a very clean and honest um, ethos, and therefore relationship with all the companies, so that it's not tainted by any personal vested interest, which. Uh, uh, if we were an, an active investor in all the companies or some of the companies, that would be distorted. Um, uh, but you know, I, I have some involvement with all the companies, in as much as I know what's not what, what's going on with all of them. I, I think it's said on your uh, profile you're on the board for a few of them. Are they companies? That so are no, I'm not on the board for any companies within Set Squared. No, but, but I have been. I, I have been on boards of other companies. Yeah. 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 You still sit on on them or? Uh, not on any at the moment not on any company boards but I sit on um, a number of advisory boards uh, um, uh, doing various different things Mm -hmm. you mentioned BBC and ITV so you get a lot of TV crews coming to the shed was that just an opening or have they been since Uh, well it's it's um, uh, it's a very photogenic um, place yeah, physically it's and sure, aesthetically, so, yeah. but also it's kind of a high-profile um, uh, space, and so MPs and ministers. Uh, we've also had the bank governor of the Bank of England. We've had the Duke of York, um, a variety of people who who come here for visits, and we get the media out. The the ITV Sky BBC thing was. Um, uh, the Local Enterprise Partnership got <coughs> £18 million pounds of funding from government and Nick Clegg came here to announce it. Um, so that was where we had the... Because that was live TV by, on, on morning breakfast TV from all three networks. And, uh, if, just to the listeners, uh, what would be your biggest advice to someone who's just at the just kind of... They have an idea. Stages yeah. Of a so well, just from the very beginning, they have an idea. Where should they go from there? Should they start to build it up, or should they immediately go and seek advice? Uh, so, <clears throat> I think it's if you're not cut out for really hard graft, don't do it. Uh, 
if you are cut out and you want a roller coaster, um, have a go at starting your business. Um, you know, the worst that can happen is it doesn't work and you can try something else. Um, uh, Socialise your ideas. So that that's about, you know, talking to people about what you're trying to do because that's where you most people actually get the real sanity checking and also ideas to in, to enhance it um you know that could take the form of advice um but also just you know talk about your idea to somebody who doesn't understand it and see how they you know what what they reflect back and if they haven't understood what you're trying to do well perhaps you're not explaining it very well or perhaps it's not viable um so socialize your idea is probably my biggest advice and, uh, for the what, have you had any big kind of massive success stories from the who have come here as a new company and have left and so some of the some of the ones we like to talk about uh, mybuilder.com which you may have come across they've been advertising on TV recently so um, a website brokering tradesmen and people needing tradesmen um, uh, tidal generation uh, doing tidal energy devices under the underwater um, which got bought by Rolls Royce uh, Bright Pearl um, uh, started with us as seven people you know they're now 50 people um, in San Francisco and, and Bristol uh, Exmos is a great success um, uh, Second Sync which got bought by Twitter at the beginning of last year um, some of these names of course you've never heard of but that's the nature of, of the space we're in yeah, yeah. Is it very much a case of then, you mentioned a lot of those got bought by much larger companies, so as soon as they do become profitable and people, and people see them, do they immediately say, yeah, we'll sell out to the larger company? Well, so it's, that, it, 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 it's, it's a challenge because that is a common exit route. Um, it's a shame because we want to create more, you know, big British companies um, that, that, that stay local um, uh, and it would be great for companies to start small. And, and grow big but um, if you've had uh, venture capital investment there's always pressure to sell out to whoever's going to pay pay the money but also founders want to get you know um, sell their business and, and, and get their get their pension money sometimes those businesses still say local it's a case of just handing over management but often it, I'm afraid companies do get bought by bigger multinational companies mm-hmm. Are most of the companies local based? or Almost all I mean, we have, we have supported companies from elsewhere. We've had a, a Greek-based company, a Dutch-based company, who've looked to launch their products in, in the UK, um, and we've supported them virtually to de-risk before they've done so. Have you thought about um, kind of going to different countries, or maybe London? Or, or even just beyond, yeah, it's like only southwest set, at the moment, isn't it? Uh, no, it's Bristol, Bath, oh, Exeter, so Southampton, Shed Surrey. Well, yeah, so for Engine Shed. Shed. No, um, Set Squared is Surrey, Southampton, yeah. and... Yeah. yeah um, so Set Squared as a partnership is starting to expand now to, to other places. Engine Shed, um, absolutely no interest in, in expanding outside of Bristol. If, if people want to copy the model of this collaboration and the style, yeah. Yeah. then that's fine. And, and they're Cardiff, Gloucester, uh, University in, in um, Holland, uh another place you're already kind of looking at and starting to adopt it but that's that's fine but we're not going to run it mm-hmm. well, this is very much a Bristol thing why do you have so many um, so you have set square do you have Webstar why isn't it just under kind of one so Webstar is not run by us that's an independently run thing yeah. but the idea is that um, there's an important statement here about uh, better ways of doing business um, and things which compete you can still collaborate, mm-hmm. uh, and and um, WebStart, for example, do a different thing than Set Squared does. Uh, there's some overlap, but they are serving a different purpose. And and our view was that actually putting those in the same stable demonstrated that actually collaboration or cooperation, if you like, is an acceptable way of doing business, and that's something we want to promote. Um, uh, and it also brings a much broader set of communities together and when we have engine shed 2 we hope to have a social incubator um, a clean web incubator perhaps a smart cities incubator preferably run by 
different people but all in the same space so that we have a much stronger hub yeah. and it's easier for people to find what they need mm -hmm. and to clarify that because we haven't actually mentioned it web starts and internet based startup well it, 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 it? it it's an except what i would call an accelerator okay. for internet startups mm -hmm. so physical um uh but that you know you have to be an internet business um and they invest they they invest some money in return for equity for each yeah. business and it's a fixed length program um where set square doesn't invest and it's an open-ended program mm -hmm. and it's not just internet businesses and you, uh, okay. you have uh so people who people from different companies do they ever kind of because you talked about how it's such a social kind of hub do they sort of work together in the end and uh, so, so there's a lot of interaction between company? yeah a lot of interaction between companies um uh so some will you know at the very simple level share experience and share contacts some end up sharing offices um because they want to work more closely together um sometimes employees will you know if a company can't afford to hire somebody full time you'll get people who work half their week in one company and half their week in another um, uh, and you get businesses kind of doing collaborative projects together Is that something you consider when recruiting the companies to no. try and no, together. no. So that, that uh, we've been commonly asked that: do do we try and engineer an ecosystem? And uh, like, we'll have a company of, like that and a company like that. No, we don't. We let right. that happen. We're focused very much on on uh, only taking in companies that are valid on their own merits. And you have sort of uh, certain technologies you're looking for, or is nope, it just nope. on the company? No, itself? so uh, don't care. What, what sector um, is it high tech is it high growth can we add value okay. and what, what does your kind of day look like are you mainly in meetings with it's mostly meeting it, well it's not so much meetings with new companies it's mostly uh, meeting with with people who want to uh, know more about what we're doing want to get involved with the with the um, ecosystem uh it could be people I want to. I think we can develop partnerships with. So it's, it's mostly meetings mm -hmm. and a certain amount of project work. So I'm working on, you know, trying to grab time between meetings to work on the plans for growing into Engine Shed Two. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got a project going with Department for Business Innovation Skills. They're coming down in a, in a few months. There's a fund launching in London, and they're coming down in a few weeks to look at what companies could be invested in so I'm kind of arranging all of that so I do a lot of kind of connecting into the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Have the council always cooperated with the engine check because I know they put a lot of money into the actual building didn't they? Yeah, so so, they, so the city council are uh, it, it, the, the engine shed operates under a collaboration agreement between the city council and the University of Bristol. So mm -hmm. uh, absolutely cooperative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bristol's great for this grassroots stuff, isn't it? Yep. Lots, lots it is. Good, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, you're a very, very busy man, so yeah, we've just got our, our uh, uh, last two questions. We ask every guest. They're quite kind of big questions, but uh, looking into the next ten, twenty years, what are you most excited for, personally, globally, anything? Bristol. Bristol. <laughs> Superb. <laughs> <answer. laughs> no, I think I think I think um, Bristol has been. I've lived in Bristol all my life. My family been in Bristol since 1650. Um, uh, we had, you know, boom times historically. Until recently, we had a period of, well, stuff was going okay, no real recession. You know, the football clubs did well and they're not so well. You know, some good industries. Um, but it's never really pushed itself uh, and asserted its own potential now that's changing so actually we've starting from a very strong base and it's just going ballistic at the moment um uh and uh so this is about the most exciting place to be in the uk at the moment um and people from outside bristol tell me that you know we've got bristol is open um we've got the universities collaborating more we've got the local authorities collaborating more than they ever have done in the past um, and there are some great businesses and you know Engine Shed is playing its part in that so um, without a doubt Bristol is, gets me excited mm -hmm. and on the flip side is what are you most worried for 
are the institutions and organisations in the city not actually stepping up to the mark? So the relationship between the council and the university and the other local authorities and the other universities are good at the moment, but if any of those decide not to collaborate as much as they should for the benefit of the city, that's what worries me most. No reason why they should at the moment, but that the 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 potential influence of those big players, the local authorities and the universities, is absolutely critical, um, and they need to play their part. How do you mean, in terms of funding or? Well, it's not just about funding. Culture. It's about it's about engaging with the city and collaborating. Right. Um, uh, and and so <clears throat> so where funding comes into play, with if 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 funding for the university sector reduces then that's going to put a strain on the universities and and um, that's going to be harder for them to do some of the softer stuff like supporting this you know engine shed um, uh, and, and that will have that will be a big price mm-hmm. uh, Talking about funding actually it, in terms of supporting the engine shed is it kind of do you have so if the companies you have do you get kind of a benefit from them financially? Well, they pay a membership fee so it's just a flat fee for anyone. Well, it's, so it, it's it's if they're a virtual member, it, it's a flat fee. If they're renting space here, so a third of our companies are physically resident here, they pay a rent proportionate to the amount of space they have and the length of time they've been. So okay. the rent goes up over yeah. time. Okay. But we don't take a a, a, a success fee. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time, That's and a we'll be sure to post a bunch of links to associated companies with both Set Squared and the Engine Shed. Sure. And if you don't mind, we'd like to take a picture of you yep, in the shed fine. to show people yep. how incredible it is in here. Fine. Okay, thanks okay. again. Pleasure. Thanks for listening. <laughs>